Steam Locomotives in Miniature at the Steam Workshop. This episode is called Road Vehicles Old and New. And just look at this beautiful road vehicle. This is Simon testing a Clayton steam lorry, and as you can see it runs very well, it's fairly fast. This one was originally licensed for the road, I think the tax has probably run out now. But you could drive it on the road if you really wanted to. The only problem with Clayton steam lorries is you can't see too many of the moving parts because the steam engine is underneath out of the way with a chain drive to the back axle. This car park outside the steam workshop is ideal for testing locomotives and it's pretty good for walking your dog as well. This is John's dog and he's called Albert but he's not too thrilled about being dragged behind a steam lorry. And in this clip you can see that John's trying to entice him into the back of the steam lorry but he's having none of it. So John picked him up and continued the run, holding the dog. Albert the dog's about eight months old and he spends every day at the steam workshop. He sits upstairs, sometimes barking when people come to the door, and he's very used to the sights and sounds of miniature steam locomotives. At this stage, I'd just like to say that we're not just playing with this Clayton steam lorry, we're steam testing it. Yes, of course we are. This is a new addition to the stock at the steam workshop, this is a 5 inch gauge coronation class locomotive. The streamlining is beaten out of copper sheet and underneath the streamlining is a full Duchess locomotive. When the full size coronations were first built they ran like this but after a few years the LMS removed the streamlining from these locomotives and converted them into what we know as a Duchess locomotive which were also very much things of beauty. This video is sort of in reverse. I put the running of the steam wagon first, and this is the steam wagon before we steamed it. It's very well made and very detailed. So this is the firing procedure for a Clayton steam lorry. First of all, you introduce a fire into the boiler through a small fire hole door at the front. And this is fine as long as the lorry is stationary. It wouldn't be very good if the lorry was moving, but it's okay when it stood still. Here's a small fire hole door at the front of the boiler. And this hand belongs to Dave who works at the steam workshop and he's opened the fire hole door to shovel some coal into the firebox. After which the fire hole door will be closed and all further firings will take place through a hole at the top of the boiler. And here is the hole in question, right in the middle of the boiler and you put the coal in here. And it falls through the hole onto the fire bars underneath. In some ways this is altogether a mad way of firing a boiler because you take the plug out of the top and quite a lot of heat's going to come up through this hole. Probably ideal for cooking on, I think making breakfast over this fire hole would be quite a good thing. These steam wagons were popular for a short while, as were traction engines, but then I believe that the government taxed them out of existence. I mentioned earlier that the steam engine is underneath the wagon and here it is, very little in the way of moving parts. You can see the engine driven crankshaft and you can actually see the crossheads going back and forth if you lay down and look underneath. Steam wagons and steam lorries are not my personal favourite in the world of steam engines, and I really wouldn't want to fire a full-size one sitting so close to the boiler. The heat must have been unbearable on hot days. So this is a Clayton steam lorry, an articulated lorry with a steam engine. As far as a miniature steam locomotive goes, even though it is a road locomotive, the Clayton steam lorry is quite big until you put it next to this. It's a traction engine, a very large traction engine. I think it's four or even four and a half inch scale. When this large traction engine first arrived at the steam workshop, mechanically it was not in good condition. The crankshaft had a few problems. And thanks to the efforts of John, Mark and Dave, it's now in very good mechanical condition. The man with the hose pipe is called Mark. Mark is really a carpenter, and woodwork is his forte, but he can turn his hand to most things. And Mark's main job on this engine was the reprofiling of all the connecting rods from the crankshaft to the expansion links and the piston rods via the crossheads. This engine is virtually new. It's only had a couple of steamings, but it didn't run very well at all. I never saw it run originally before it was modified, but apparently it didn't run very well and it sounded like a bag of spanners. And thinking about it, I probably had a girlfriend like that. The man who's down on the floor at the back of the engine is Dave from Steam Workshop and he's currently feeding the large firebox with some firewood. And the man with the fine beard on the left is Mark. 
and he seems very interested in the firewood going into the fire hole door. Maybe it's because he's a carpenter and he doesn't like to see his work thrown into a fire hole. You will notice that this traction engine is making quite a lot of smoke. The blower's on top of the chimney and it's really smoking badly. That's because it's house coal and it's really smelly stuff. I'm currently voicing this over at 7.30 in the morning on Saturday the 12th of May and this test was done yesterday and I can still smell the smoke. But even with this terrible coal, some steam is raised within about an hour. With about £80 per square inch showing on the gauge, there are some leaks. Mainly around the safety valves, they just needed tightening. This next part of the video features something that Mark made for the back of the engine. And this is Mark about to demonstrate his product. And Mark is currently sporting a rather attractive lumberjack shirt. And in this clip, Mark is simulating the driving of the traction engine while simultaneously sat on one of his seats. It's quite a good design really, you can have two people, one sat on each of the pads at the back of the engine, or maybe one person with a broken leg, because you could put your broken leg on the other pad. And here Mark is demonstrating that particular feature of his design. But I don't think he appreciated when I suggested that we actually broke his leg for the video. The man who's arrived at the front of the engine is John. And John is the chief mechanical engineer at the steam workshop, and his personal standard of work is outstanding. John is an extremely good mechanical engineer, one of the best I've personally met. In this clip, John is tightening the nuts on the piston gland to prevent steam leakage around the piston rod where it enters the cylinder. And now the time has come to open the regulator and see what happens. This is a twin cylinder engine, but it's not self-starting because it's a compound. I'd better put a health and safety warning on this bit. What John's currently doing is adjusting the position of the slide valves in the steam chest by using a spanner on a lock nut. I can't recommend doing this, but John is a professional and knows what he's doing. I do the same frequently, albeit on smaller engines, and after all these years of doing things like this, I can proudly say I've got at least four of my fingers left. The working pressure of this traction engine is 175 pounds per square inch and once this working pressure was reached it was time for the test. For a first run of a traction engine after a major rebuild, it runs exceptionally well. This is a small passenger truck that fits on the back of the engine. And it's also quite good for a bit of advertising. That's it for this episode. I'm just going to leave you with the traction engine running around the yard. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found the video interesting, if not useful.